Officer Dulles was going to become the new Secretary of State at that time. He'd already been designated, although he hadn't yet taken the role. Okay? And Dr. Conant was president of Harvard University, slated to become High Commissioner in West Germany. So, international ramifications. These are not just random names. These are people spies would be interested in. Now, David Hatch, I wrote this up, by the way, for um, History Today. So inside the agency, every day, you get to see a new history piece. They're just short, a page or two. Okay? But this was History Today on uh, uh, the 60th anniversary of Rubin's death. So in 2013, January 3rd. Okay? Um, anyway, David Hatch suggested some other possibilities for, for Dulles. John Foster's brother, Alan, incoming director of Central Intelligence. Is this 18-year-old talking about him in this encrypted message? Or Eleanor Dulles, a State Department desk officer for West Germany. Again, a German connection. Okay. So this is what I love about the NSA historians. I think I know who Dulles is. And then he comes up with more interpretations, right? So uh, uh, much deeper knowledge base. OK, so another link to Germany. Ruben, instead of in his wallet having a picture of a girlfriend or something like that, has a picture of an airplane with the Nazi swastika on its tail assembly. And he was Jewish. So uh, that's hard to understand. Why would a Jew be walking around with a picture of a Nazi aircraft in his pocket after World War II, right? When he knows about the concentration camps and all the horrors. It's not, it's not something that would seem very appealing. Uh, it contained a notation on the, bank, on the back, France Field, Panama. Uh, the only other picture in his wallet was of this famous sculpture, The Thinker. I don't know if that's significant or not. OK. So is this guy a typical teenager? What else does he have on him? He's got a plastic cylinder containing a signal fuse, which could just be a, a prop for magic tricks if he's into magic. OK. We don't have to read anything too nefarious into that. The casing of a spent 38 caliber bullet? What's that? A fountain pen gun? I think, what is this, James Bond? He's got fountain pen guns? What's going on here? But again, talking to David Hatch, it's not necessarily like I might imagine. I imagine a fountain pen gun actually shooting bullets. It may, but it could have been um, shooting pepper spray. So these things were not uncommon, apparently, in the 1950s. It was referred to as a gun, but it shot pepper spray. So, OK, 47 cents, not a big deal, but he left that morning with $15. It went a lot farther in the 1950s. What happened to the rest of it? OK, and I don't know if this is misinformation or just a mistake or what, but he was said to have a science fiction magazine with him, Galaxy Science Fiction. The reports, and this is you know, in, in mainstream Philadelphia newspapers, say that this issue of the science fiction magazine contained the words Dulles and Conan, that those are names of characters in the science fiction magazine. And that also, there was an article on cryptography in it by a Dr. Bell. Well, there is a Dr. Bell, E.T. Bell. Okay, he wrote Men of Mathematics. Uh, I recommend that to everybody. If you haven't read that, it's like the Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy. It's, it's inexpensive, highly entertaining, informal, and highly inaccurate. Okay, but a wonderful, a wonderful book. So that, that makes many of us fall even more in love with mathematics. You should read it and read it early. But anyway, E.T. Bell also wrote science fiction under the pseudonym John Tame. So he had science fiction stories in these magazines, right? But not in this issue. So I ordered this magazine. Right? I found it on AB Books, a used, web, used book website. I ordered it. I read the whole thing. Dulles is not in there. Conan is not in there. Bell is not in there. There's maybe an advertisement for one of Bell's science fiction novels, but there's no article by him on cryptography. So why are these claims being made? Is it intentional misinformation or just a mistake, a misunderstanding? What's going on here? OK, more contradictions. Uh, a homicide squad detective said that Rubin was failing his classes, and that's why he committed suicide. His dad says, no, no, he started college when he was 16. He got great grades without even studying. He was happy that day. 
a lot of times, you know, parents would be naturally be reluctant to, to admit that a son committed suicide. You want to live in denial and, and not imagine that it could have been that bad. But, uh, you know, if his grades were bad, I mean, that's a fact. That's not something a parent, you know, I mean, he lives at home. I think that the parents would know. So I, I tend to side with the parents on that. It sounds like a murder to me. So hopefully through a Freedom of Information Act request, I can get the cipher. And maybe we could you know, have uh, a little more information to figure out what happened. But a very intriguing story. OK, uh, it's just death after death in this presentation, isn't it? Uh, what about the Zodiac Killer? Okay, this is a famous case. In the 1960s and 1970s, killed a lot of people. We're not sure how many. But he also sent cipher messages to newspapers. There's one he sent in three pieces to three different newspapers. I just show part one. A high school history teacher broke it. He saw it in the newspaper and he broke it. His wife helped using the psychological method. Oh, you know, he's a killer. He's probably egocentric. He wants attention. He's writing to the media. I think it begins with I. And it did. I think the word kill is in there, and it was. But you see more than 26 symbols. It was a complicated system. Sometimes L is replaced by this symbol. Sometimes it's replaced by this symbol. He had multiple substitutions for high-frequency letters. These are called homophones. Made it a lot harder to break, yet a high school history teacher did it. So pretty cool. There's a decipherment. You can find the whole thing. That's just part one, if you look online. He sent another message that nobody solved. It's the same kind of cipher, and it has attracted intense scrutiny from computer scientists using genetic algorithms, and nobody's been able to break this one. There's some claimed decipherments, but I don't think they're legitimate. Okay, now I'm going to give you a little bit of insight, even if you've already read about Zodiac. I have a little something that I think will be new to you. Here's another one where he teases, my name is, and a string of cipher symbols. Would he really be revealing his name in an encrypted form? This fellow was never caught. Here he's claiming 12 victims. San Francisco Police Department, none. Didn't catch him yet. Okay? And again, a little cipher message, unsolved. Now, one message came with a map. So a map shows Mount Diablo, and there's Zodiac symbol. Kind of looks like the crosshairs in a rifle, right? But we don't know that's why he chose that symbol. It's speculation. <coughs> but there's Mount Diablo. And he says, P.S., the Mount Diablo code concerns radians. And it looks like four inches and in something along the radians. He's talking about radians. Does this look a little different now? Maybe not a crosshairs? Maybe polar coordinates? We don't know. Gareth Penn was the first one to examine this. He has a message about Mount Diablo that he's connecting to radians. If you plot Mount Diablo and draw a straight line to one of the killings, and then draw another straight line to another killing, Gareth Penn claimed that's a radian, that angle. Some other people online you know, do their measurements. and No, that's 60 degrees. No, radian's about 57 degrees. Well, this guy's like, you know, in ciphering communications, he's misspelling animal, and like, you know, I mean, they're just littered with misspellings. He spells bus, B-U-S-S. I'll let 60 degrees be a radian for this guy, you see? I mean, I say that's within the margin of error. And I think it also depends on which map you look at, right, and how, how careful, where you draw your line exactly, how thick it is. I mean, it's, that's a small percentage error. And this murder was of a taxi driver. He got in the cab and told the guy where to go, OK? So he, was, he could take that guy wherever. He could commit the murder at any point. So coincidence that this is almost exactly a radian, you see? So I think this means something. I don't know why this guy would be talking about radians. Gareth Penn's book has this. I think that's an excellent insight into the case. But he has many other insights that I don't believe. Okay, a lot of times these people that are really creative and, and, and thinking kind of wildly hit some gold once in a while, but a lot of misses. Okay? So he actually identifies a Harvard lecturer, right, Massachusetts, as the murderer. And he publicly reveals the guy's name. And, and the guy's been featured in newspaper articles. He actually debated that guy on television. They had a debate. You're the murderer. I could prove it. I proved it in my, no, I'm not. I didn't do any of this. <laughs> so you, you got to imagine if the guy's innocent, as I believe, you know, how this must feel to have somebody accusing you of being this famous killer, right? But, but Penn's convinced he's the guy. Um, 
whoever the murderer is, I think this radiant theory is interesting. Now in the 1990s, Zodiac was active in the late 60s, early 70s, and 1990s, a Zodiac showed up in New York. He was killing people in Manhattan. Is this the same guy? He was never caught. It could be. And he was sending in ciphered communications. Not the same style, but an enciphered message. Actually, uh, some people say these are naval flags. Does that look right to you guys? I'm not trying to pin this on anybody. Don't worry about that. <laughs> some, some flags go out of date. OK. Could be an older system. All right, thank you. And here again, look, NYPD zero, and then a smiley face. 